would love to know more about the salvation we've got. So I want to ask you tonight, what kind of salvation do you have? Do you have the type of salvation that they looked forward to in the Old Testament? Do you have the type of salvation that the angels would love to get to know more about, but will never ever be able to experience it? Or do you have a salvation that is just my salvation, and that's it? There's nothing to be excited about, nothing to rejoice over, it just, Jesus died for me, rose from the dead, I'm forgiven, I'm going to heaven, hallelujah. Praise God, I'll see you when we get there. <laughs> or, is it the type of salvation that Peter, in the first few verses, had already written about? Remember, we haven't got far in the book, but remember, he says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. A living hope, uh, uh, one that is alive, that's not dead, and that will never die. A hope that continues. Uh, an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that does not uh, fade away reserved in heaven for you, a salvation where you don't have to earn your way there, you are kept by the power of God for that salvation. And you're saved by the grace, and you're kept by grace, kept by the power of God, a salvation that leads you to greatly rejoice even in different trials and tribulations that you come up against, a salvation that may be found to praise, honor, and glory, uh, and one also that leads you to rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. So there are a lot of things that Peter has already said about the salvation that we have received a salvation that is brought about through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, a salvation that keeps us until the day of redemption, a salvation that we should live every day, every moment of every day with the knowledge that we have been forgiven when we didn't deserve to be forgiven and that we have a home in heaven awaiting us. But before we get there, that we have the Holy Spirit that indwells us, that fills us, that guides us, teaches us, seals us, does everything for us so that we can live a victorious life for the Lord Jesus Christ. Or just, I'm saved, hallelujah. Well, what we're going to look at tonight is Peter pointing out how much the Old Testament prophets would have loved to know about what you are experiencing tonight. What the angels in heaven would like to know about what you are experiencing tonight. That may mean a lot or may not to us and may come across as it means a lot or doesn't mean very much to us as well. So stand with me as I read, beginning in verse 10. Now, it starts of this salvation. That salvation is what I just recapped that he had already talked about in the first eight verses of this book. So, verse 10, of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you. Searching what? 
or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them, it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us. They were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Things which the which angels desire to look into. Father, as we come to you again tonight, I praise you for your love, for your forgiveness. Lord God, I thank you for the safety you have provided us and pray that as we go on, as a church and as individual Christians, that we will rejoice greatly in your forgiveness, that we'll not get over it, and your acceptance of us, and the home that we have with you for all eternity, through Jesus. And I pray that we will let everyone know what a great God we serve. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You be seated. I want us to look at this tonight and look at what Peter is talking about here. Because it's very important, the things that he is saying tonight as we look at this passage. He's talking about the salvation that we have all received and the things that he had already written about, the joy, the, all the glory of it, everything that he'd already said about the salvation. And he said, the Old Testament prophets are the ones that told us about what was going to come about. He said, as a matter of fact, they have searched diligently into it. They have studied it. They wanted to know all that they could know about this Messiah that was going to come, about the salvation that he was going to bring the people. Now notice what he says here in verse 10. Of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace of that would come to you, who prophesied of the grace that would come to us, a grace that they didn't really know or really understand. The grace of God is extended through the Lord Jesus Christ. They were saved by looking forward to a Messiah who would come, looking forward to someone that would come and save them from their sins. But they were only looking for this person to come. They weren't there or going to ever be able to see it. I was thinking about this this afternoon and looked into it and went back to Hebrews chapter 11, the Hall of Fame for the Old Testament saints and early Christians, and looked at it and looked at Abraham that was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. But he never found it. And others that were looking for that city never found it. Others that died for their testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ, they have now found it but they hadn't found it while they were on earth. These are the things that have been revealed to us. The things of the grace of God, something that we don't deserve. When we look at that last verse and the last phrase of that verse, it says that the angels want to even look 
into it. There was a rebellion in heaven. Satan, the head angel, wanted to be equal with God. And a third of the angels followed him. And they were cast out of heaven. There is never any hope of their salvation. The moment they rebelled, they were eternally doomed to the lake of fire. They can never be saved. Well, the angels that are in heaven are there in heaven. But they don't understand what we know. They never rebelled against God. We have rebelled against God. Every one of us. But God says, I love you. And I'm going to send my son and he's going to take your place and die for you and bear your sins. And thereby through the grace of God what we don't deserve, God forgives us of our sins and gives us the gift of eternal life. They want to know about the grace. Like, what is this thing that is called grace? I know it. And if you are a born again child of God tonight, you know it and have experienced it. They never knew it. Nor will the angels ever experience it. How could God love those people so much that Jesus would leave the glories and riches of heaven and come to this earth and die on Calvary's cross a horrible death so those miserable people could be forgiven of their sins and come to live with God in heaven where we're at right now. But the other angels that sinned, he didn't die for them. He died for you so that you could be forgiven and you could have everlasting life. What is this? that's going to come about? What is this that's going to happen? They never knew about it, never experienced it. But we do experience it. We are living it. And we ought to share with the rest of the world what God has done for each one of us. And we should rejoice because God did do it for each one of us. And we have become a part of that. But we look even a little bit further. In verse 11, he says, Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them who was, in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. What about this Christ? What about this Messiah? Are you saying that they knew what was going to happen to Jesus? Look at the 22nd Psalm. Look at the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. They knew exactly what was going to happen to Jesus. They knew that he was going to be crucified. The 22nd Psalm talks about the nails in his hands and in his feet. The 22nd Psalm talks about him gambling for his clothes. The 53rd chapter of Isaiah talks about him being beaten for our iniquities and that he bore our sin. You see, people use that to say, well, we claim healing because Jesus died so we could be healed. 
He did not die so we could be healed of the common cold or the worst cancer that ever existed. He died so you would be healed from the sin disease that you've got. They knew what was going to happen. They could see it because God had revealed it. How can we experience it? How can we know it? It would be something great. Can you imagine being an Isaiah or being the psalmist that wrote these and thinking about it and knowing that the Messiah was going to come and this is how the Messiah was going to be treated, but it was for the forgiveness of our sins. Can you imagine how much they would have sat there and hoped, Oh Lord, come. Come during my lifetime. Let me experience what you're going to do for mankind. But he didn't come during their lifetime. He came. And we now experience it. Can we be as excited about experiencing it as they were about wanting to experience it as excited about what God has done through the Lord Jesus Christ for each and every they looked for it they studied it they marveled at it they wanted to know everything that they could know about it, but the God, through the Holy Spirit, revealed to them that it wasn't for them. Peter said it was for us, so that we could know it, so that we could experience it. And maybe that is why he talked about rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of joy. Because we have experienced something that the Old Testament saints never got to experience. We have, are experiencing something right now that the angels in heaven are astonished at. That God would love you so much. When none of us deserve it. That God would love us so much. that he would send his son to die for you. That tells me I need to get a little more excited. That tells me I ought to enjoy my salvation, not just, well, I've got a mansion over the hilltop and someday I'll get there. Praise God, I've got a life here that is far beyond anything that anyone else on the face of this earth has unless they have received Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. And I've got something to be rejoice about here as well. Isn't it good to get into the Word of God and take it and look at it and not just gloss over certain things because it may not be the way we do things. But just look at it and say, boy, this is what God wants. This is what God likes. God wouldn't have them written it if it didn't like it. I may have gone back to southwest Virginia. God wouldn't have had them written it. But it works. God wouldn't have had him wrote it if it wasn't what he meant for us to know and to, for us to understand. I am amazed to even think that the angels in heaven right now are looking at this looking at me and thinking, why did God love him that much? Why did Jesus love him that much? 
They're in heaven. But you know what? God loves me more than he loves the angels. God loves you more than he loves the angels. And if you're here tonight and you have never invited Jesus to come into your life to be your Lord and your Savior, oh, what a fantastic time it would be tonight for you to say, well, what do I need to do? We're going to sing a song. And when we start singing that song, you just step out wherever you're at and you come up here and say, Pastor Mike, I want to invite Jesus to come into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. You see, he's already died for you. He's already given his life for you so that you could have eternal life. Will you give him your life tonight? so he can forgive you and he can save you for all eternity. Father, as we come to you again tonight, we rejoice and praise you for everything you do. And I pray, Father, that you will be glorified through the decisions that are going to be made tonight because decisions are going to be made. Because when the Holy Spirit is dealing with us and leading us to come for salvation, to come for rededication, or come for church membership, we're going to make a decision. A yes decision or a no decision. Yes, I will be obedient or no, I won't. Decisions are going to be made. I pray that they'll be made for your glory. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we stand and sing,